I am pleased to report today that 6,893 Albertans have now recovered from COVID-19. We conducted nearly 7,000 tests yesterday and identified 48 additional cases of COVID-19 in the province. Currently, 38 people are hospitalized with COVID-19 with seven of these in ICUs. In the last 24 hours, we have confirmed no new COVID-19 related deaths in the province. As we approach the start of summer, I want to take a moment to recognize the 151 lives that have been lost to COVID-19 in the province. These individuals ranged in age from 27 to 105. And while the majority had two or more underlying conditions, a small number had none. Independent of their age or health status, they will all be missed. My heart goes out to all those who have lost loved ones during this time, whether to COVID-19 or any other cause. It is not surprising that findings released today by the, the Center for Addiction and Mental Health indicate the pandemic has had a significant impact on the mental health of Canadians. This national survey found that one in five Canadians reported feeling moderate to severe anxiety in the last few weeks due to factors such as job loss or fear of the virus. While this was a decline from the peak of the pandemic, many of us are still feeling anxious about the days ahead. I want to reiterate that supports are available. One free, simple way to get support is the Alberta Health Services tool, Text for Hope. These messages offer advice, encouragement, and ways of building resilience. Simply text COVID-19 HOPE to 393939. If you are feeling overwhelmed, you can also call the Mental Health Helpline 24-7 for confidential support or access counselling in your community through AHS. We are in a new phase of COVID-19 in Alberta. While we continue to test widely and identify some new cases daily, the spread of the virus remains relatively stable. In fact, it is likely that Albertans will soon no longer need such regular updates from me. This is because the onus is increasingly on all Albertans to protect each other. So what we've seen in Edmonton is that there have been several uh, gatherings uh, that we saw that there has been spread outwards from a, a group of people that gathered and then there's been secondary and tertiary transmission so that mean that secondary and tertiary meaning that people who were in that gathering who were ill then unfortunately passed to others who then passed to others in some cases so we are working very closely to contain that spread with a variety of of groups I want to again emphasize that it is so critical that if someone is symptomatic, if they are feeling ill, uh, that they stay home, that they stay away from others and get tested. Because while we want to make sure that we are limiting spread, we also want to make sure that we know where COVID has spread to. And so it's important that we not uh, shame those who have tested positive. I think that many people uh, in Edmonton, but also in other places around the province, are um, seeing the low numbers that we had up to a couple of weeks ago combined with our stage one and two reopenings possibly as a reassurance that the public health measures are no longer required and so I think in in Edmonton we just happened to have seen over the last few weeks again a couple of examples where perhaps one person who was infectious spread to others and that's uh, continued on we are again making sure that that we're putting measures in place to stop that spread, but I think it could certainly happen in other places around the province as well if people are not following public health guidance. And if you have even one person who's infectious who attends a large gathering, it can immediately spread to many other people. So while we are seeing again uh, this increase over the last few weeks in Edmonton, uh, it's not to say that other places are immune and it's just a reminder that all of us need to continue to practice all of those public health measures that are going to get us through this next several months uh, to be able to continue having open businesses and more interactions but to do so in a safe way. I think it's important to note that there are a variety of different situations across the country so some provinces have lower active cases right now than Alberta and others have higher and while I know that Albertans are perhaps starting to consider traveling, and again, while it is my recommendation, the 
There's no legal requirement uh, right now with respect to traveling interprovincially. So if Albertans are choosing to travel, it's important that they consider where they're going to and follow the same public health guidance wherever they go and when they get back as well. So if they are traveling to a province where the rates are very high, to be extra cautious in the activities that they undertake and to make sure if they are in close contact with someone who is a case of COVID that they isolate no matter where they are in the country, uh, get tested and make sure that they are not passing that on to other people. So again, while it is my recommendation to stay closer to home, at least for the time being, that may change going forward. It's also important to remember that wherever you go, you need to follow the, pu the same public health guidance.